Good morning, everybody, and God bless. We're in the Temptation series, Paradise Now Church, Brisbane. And uh, we continue on today just uh, deconstructing the word temptation. And we're getting a better idea on temptation. And uh, how to deal with it. Thus far we have uh, concluded that temptation is not an obligation. It's an offer from the darkness and the darkness will try to um, convince us to do what they say. Uh, but we have Jesus who's always ever present. The devil in the darkness, they exaggerate the dividends when tempting. And you'll always find misquoted scripture in the midst. And... Um, devil has a plan for our lives as Jesus has a plan and it's our choice we choose don't we as Joshua said choose ye today who you will serve um, we found that the devil is a trickster. And uh, quite elusive. Um, last week we looked at the A. in um, Temptation, D-M-P-T-A, which was anarchist. Um, disorder and mayhem. Uh, but we have the Lord's uh, order to keep us uh, on the straight and narrow. Do things the Lord's way and we don't have to worry about the um, the fallen angel or any other angels. Always remembering that the devil there's only an angel, he's not the creator or a creator. Today we're looking at the uh, third T, T-M-P-T-A-T. We're going to be reading out of Matthew 18. Yeah, for the third T. Matthew 18, verse 32. 
Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry, delivered him to the tormentors until he should pay all that he, all that was due to him. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. And that word in uh, verse 34 Tormentors can be rendered torturers. That's where to. That's where um, torture torture comes from. Torment. Tortured. They're on par. And so Jesus speaking, red riding. Once again, my Heavenly Father. He's not speaking of himself. He's speaking of his Heavenly Father. So, the oneness, the modalist, uh, once again, uh, thinking. in their sandy doctrine. So that word, uh, torture and uh, torturers, tormentors, that, that's the, the pleasure of the powers of darkness. They love to torment. They love to, to torture. That's their work. And when we don't do what the Lord says, Father in heaven hands us over. to the torturers and the tormentors. The devil doesn't want you to do what the Father said. The devil wants uh, you to be disobedient or answer to temptation. He delights in that. As the Lord delights in righteousness, loving kindness and judgment. So, here we have a chapter here. Verse 32 that his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, following the way of the devil, wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. I had a lot of debt unto God. And, you know, the Lord, he forgave me all my sins and put the Holy Ghost in me. Put his spirit in me as a bonus. Right? As a down payment. I 
That's why I sing, I love, I love, I love that man from Galilee. Well, he saved my soul and he done so much for me. He forgave me of my sin and put the Holy Ghost in me. Oh, I love, I love that man from Galilee. And Jesus, he forgave me of my sins. And so I forgave that Muslim who attacked me, tried to kill me. Who was reeking of our hatred and anger, taking his hatred and anger out on me. But I forgave him because the Lord forgives me. <laughs> He's my lost brother. Uh, my lost half brother. Muslims. Because they were of the seed of Abraham. Abraham went with Hagar and produced Ishmael. Then Abraham was with his wife, Sarah, and produced Isaac. And uh, the Lord has a way of doing things. And he, according to Jesus, uh, we're to forgive our brothers if your brother sins against him. You forgive them okay. when they repent. Forgive them, no matter what they do. But the old darkness, you know, they make things difficult. Don't they the powers of darkness make things difficult, and. Uh, Love to see the people of God troubled. Tormented in their minds. You know, that's what sin, that's what uh, sin does. Once the powers of the air get you to sin, they tempt you to lead you away from the straight and narrow. And after you have fulfilled uh, their demand and their persuasion, then it's turned back on you. Look at you. Look what you've done. And they endeavour. Then the darkness endeavours to drag you down, down, deeper and down. That's why the Lord tells us uh, in the writings of Romans, Romans chapter 6, the Lord tells us clearly, doesn't he? Walk in the spirit, don't be in the flesh, don't hold regret and, and revenge. Taking vengeance yourself. We leave those things to the Lord. There's no payback. If you start that, you're going to be tormented in your mind. Right? We start doing things beyond and above the master of masters 
we're going to be in a lot of trouble mentally. Holding grudges. It's just not worth it. Hey? We have to press on. Forgive. If we do not forgive, he cannot forgive us. Forgive us our trespasses as he forgives them who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let me just read that. Says here. Matthew yeah. six. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Matthew six fourteen. For if you forgive men their sins, their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, that'll be women too, their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That the old darkness loves to torment. When you don't forgive people of their sins, they just keep playing over in your head. It goes over and over. And it, it's not good for you um, mentally and it's not good for you physically. And you become sick. That's why the people in the world, you've got so many sick people who are on the wide road. They're not aware. Many of them, most of them are not aware. This is a principle of the Lord. They don't know the Lord. They don't know his ways. They don't know his testimonies. And so... They're not well, physically or mentally. They just their heads in a knot, their stomachs in a knot, and their body is uh, suffering. We don't want that. We want the vehicle to run smoothly. <laughs> so we have to stay in tune. The vehicle has to be tuned properly. And when we are tuned properly, we're in tune with the Lord. We're in tune with Him. We're walking circumspect before the Lord. We're walking in step. Left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. Right turn. Left, 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 right, left. And so, it's duty first, isn't it? 
It's not just saying that. It's not just mouthing that. We have to do that. Right? We have to have our heart in it because we're in an elite army, the army of the Lord. <laughs> but that doesn't stop the powers of darkness. That doesn't stop the devil from uh, coming and tempting us. Right? For example, um, we all remember what happened with Peter. If we go over to Luke, we have to mark Luke 22, you know. Luke 22, 54. Having arrested him, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. This is Jesus talking about here. But Peter followed at a distance. Now when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. And a certain servant girl, seeing him, as he sat by the fire, she looked intently at him and said, this man was also with him. But he denied him, saying, woman, I do not know him. And after a little while, another saw him and said, you also are of them. But Peter said, Man, I'm not. <coughs> then after about an hour had passed, another confidently affirmed, saying, Surely this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out, and wept bitterly. See that? Now, I know a lot of people over the decades have said, to, you know, use this, use these scriptures to excuse themselves from backsliding continuously. No, backslide, come back, backslide, come back. But we don't see Peter backsliding and um, betraying, denying the Lord time and time and time again, do we? So we can't go giving credence to the, this kind of behaviour, to betrayal or denial or backsliding. Or, right? We can't treat it cheaply. It's very uh, damaging to backslide. Because every person that I have encountered and come in contact with that is a serial backslider, is very tormented. They're troubled in their minds because they don't really know where they are. 
person who don't know if they're saved or not. They're so confused. Now, we put ourselves in that position. And we don't want to go there, do we? I know I don't want to go there. So the key there is to never lose your first love. Never lose your first love. Never never play the coward. Right? Started off bad, didn't it? Peter followed at a distance. Started off bad. Well, he's thinking of himself, isn't he? From the word go, from the get go, he, he's thinking of himself. And uh, he got down the road a bit further, and people started to recognise him. I know that, but <laughs> I, I, I tell you what. I have to watch my step. Got all these tattoos of Jesus on me. And I'm in the midst of the public every day. And I can feel the eyes attached to my back. <laughs> the eyes are on me. And that's not thinking of someone I'm not, that's just the truth. Waiting for you to make one wrong move so that they can put it on you and pull it over your head like a hood. That's the power of the darkness. Eh? They're waiting for you to make a wrong move. Now, I don't wait for people to make wrong moves, let me say that, because I'm not of the devil. But when they do the wrong thing, they have to be corrected. I believe in that. And as a pastor and a minister and a preacher and a prophet, I have to uh, keep my eye on things that are in the fellowship, and coming into the fellowship and going out of the fellowship. People. Right? And if people come in and they're doing the wrong thing, or they're saying but not doing, I have to let the, the, the fellowship know and say, did you see that? Did you see that, Chappie? He said this and he said that, and he didn't do it. Don't emulate that. Don't do what he did. You had you seen the example? Don't do it, because I love my sheep. Hey, and hopefully my sheep love me and esteem me highly in love. Not esteem me in love, esteem me highly in love, because I'm looking out for their soul. And that sometimes can make you look like a big bad wolf. Wolf, wolf. Because right? what you're doing is, is not appealing to the flesh. Right? But I'm not to appeal to the flesh. I'm, I have to let the people know to peel that off. <laughs> So, that old tempter, eh? You see what he done with Peter there? He got in Peter's head, see? And I don't, I, I, no, I don't, I don't know him, I don't know him. I, I don't want to suffer with him. Eh? Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. 
And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Bitter weeping. See the, the end result? That was the, the form of torment that was brought upon himself because he didn't stand for the Lord. Right? We're tempted to back off, aren't we? We say, oh, the fellow at that church, you know, he's not in the good books with many people. But not go back there. He's this, he's that. The majority say so. Well, the majority are lost, according to Scripture. Many take the wide road. How many? Many. Few take the narrow road. As Brother Donald Wilson has said, and said to me, he said, Dear Brother, I have suffered to be associated with you and it has cost me to be associated with you. See? But he was prepared to pay the price. I mean, what a thing to say. I mean, what a thing to hear, not so much to say. I think it's a great thing to say as we suffer with Christ and we're crucified with Christ. Right? It, it's biblical. But in these days we hear, you know, people getting all the so-called so blessings because they're associated with Billy, the Bible College pastor. Right? I'm associated with Billy, the Bible College pastor. And all the people love Billy. Yeah. All the people love Billy. I'm just digging around here and uh, prepping. Yeah. In Hebrews 10. And this is in relation to what Brother Donald Wilson said. And Brother Donald was a true man of God right? that recognised the truth and, and recognised that I speak the truth and have the truth and I'm anointed by the truth who is Jesus. Right? Hebrews 10, and the verse is 32. Do you recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings? Partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. See that? Partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and here's the punchline, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. See that? If you want to become a, pen, a companion of anyone that speaks the truth, you're going to have suffering and tribulation. But the devil might, and the devil may, and the devil could whisper in your ear, powers of the air, oh, you don't want to suffer, do you? You don't want trouble. Well, you better not hang with that man, because... <laughs> 
things won't turn out good for you. And you could uh, very well um, be unhappy. But the reality is, suffering and, and crucifixion It's far better than being tormented and weeping bitterly. <laughs> hey? At least we're suffering and being crucified uh, for a prize that's eternal. Hey? Not just rubbing our hands together beside the fire for the moment. What do you reckon? Weeping bitterly, that's all that you're going to get when we surrender to the devil. Bitter weeping. I've seen it time and time again. Been decades, decades on the streets of the world. Decades. And the stories I've heard, and the tormented backsliders, eh? who continually, persistently deny the Lord. It's a relationship you wish you never had. If you come to the Lord and you turn your back on Him, and that's what the devil wants. <laughs> it's what the devil wants. Because he's into torment and torture. And that's where the Lord hands the people over to. To the torturers. When we don't forgive. And what about... Um, What about that other fellow there in Matthew um, 26? This is a very sad one, this one. Let's go over to Matthew 26 and have a look. Matthew 26. Let's see what we've got there. And the verse is 47. It says in my Bible, And while he was still speaking, Behold, Judas, one of the twelve, was in a great, with a great multitude, with, with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now his betrayer had given them a sign, saying, Whomever... I kiss, he is the one, sees him. Immediately he went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. But Jesus said to him, Friend, why have you come? Right? Boy, oh boy. It's either the devil got in his head. The powers of the air got in his head. And uh, Judas. Judas betrayed, didn't he? And what happened to Judas? Well, Judas went out and he hung himself. That's how bad the torment was. And he went out and hung himself from a tree. Okay. Peter wept bitterly. And 
Judas hung himself. Hey? Both were tormented. Both done the dirty on Jesus. And Jesus didn't even blink. Hey? I don't want people to be tormented, which is why I preach the way I do and why I speak the way I do. But we have a more fun, uh, supposedly enlightened way today. Uh, just look at the, the government and the authorities. More fun and enlightened. Hey? Eh? The police are having to raise the children. Unheard of, isn't it? The parents don't want to raise the children. Everything's skew if. The fathers or the dads, if I want to be politically correct, the dads, I don't want to say father, I might have the nitpickers out. The Nat trainers are saying, oh, we're not to call anyone father. <laughs> we're not to call anyone father. When as, that's as the world talks. He's your father. We're, we're, we are aware as the people uh, of God that we don't call anyone father, as in, Father, but uh, yeah, the fathers don't want to raise their children, and most of the time because uh, the mothers don't want to let them, because you're not allowed to uh, discipline the child, and the rod span, and it's the devil's behind it all. The darkness is laughing. They've brought their confusion. The child's tormented. The father's tormented. And the mother's tormented. They're all troubled. Endless. In their mind. Keep going over and over and over. <laughs> it's best just to do the right thing. It's best just to speak the truth. When we've been caught out, we don't try and make excuses and slide through the gap. Do we? We don't try and talk our way around it so we can escape. We just bite the bullet and say yes. I did do that. Because when we start lying and we get away with it, that's when we start to be tormented and tortured. Torturing ourselves. Even though we got away with it. Well, we thought we did. But the Lord knows you're a liar. And that's tormenting. And that's what the devil wants. And, the, you know, the Lord's gift and present may not come immediately. But the day will come when you remember. Just like Peter did. The day come, or the moment come, and he remembered. Okay. The moment come, and um, the Lord said, Do you remember what I said? I am, found the wrestler. You remember that, Peter? Hey? 
You remember what I said? <laughs> Glory to the Lamb. In Luke, we go back to 22. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter went out and wept bitterly. That's in 61. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. You just imagine it. Jesus looking you in the face. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he did, didn't he? And that's what the Lord will remind us of. Revelation 21, 8. On the judgment day, he said, Remember I said the liar will not enter the kingdom? Well, there you go. Remember I said the coward will not enter the kingdom? Remember I said the immoral will not enter my kingdom? Do you remember I said, unless you love me more than your mother, sister, brother, friend, husband, wife, children, you are not mine? Do you remember that? Do you remember the preacher that said to you that if you don't bear the characteristic fruits of Christ, he will cut you off from his vine and put you in the fire? Do you remember that? Do you remember that the preacher said, few find the narrow gate? Do you remember that? <laughs> Do you remember Peter? He said, hey. Who what? Look, no one wants anyone. to be tormented. Hey? I know I don't. I don't want my worst enemy to be tormented. So I'll tell them the truth. Matthew 27. Can we go there, please? Matthew 27. And the verse is... Three. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders saying, I have sinned by betraying Jesus, by betraying the Lord. I've sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed, and he went and hanged himself. Well, that's the pinnacle of torment, isn't it? That's the end. That's the end. Sinned against the Lord. Right? <laughs> We need to be serious with the Lord. We need to take him at his word. Trust him. Huh? 
pain. He was tormented to the place where he couldn't live, couldn't live on. You see people, they go on a rampage and they kill people. They're so tormented. Because people have done things to them, see? They might be in a school setting and they've been tormented at school, been troubled, I should say, and they've been harassed and belittled and they're full of anger and unforgiveness and hatred. And uh, some of it rightly, some of it not rightly. Some of it of their own imagination. Oh, that person hates me. Oh, that person's talking about me. When that's only in their mind. But anyway, they go forward. And it just builds up and builds up and builds up. Until they take a gun. Well, it's actually a pistol. And people call pistols guns, don't they? They call ignorantly, and they call rifles guns, but they're not. A rifle's a rifle, a pistol is a pistol, and a gun is like a cannon. <laughs> and I haven't heard of anyone taking a cannon to school and blasting the people, <laughs> their fellow students. They take a handgun, they take a pistol to school, or a machine gun, or a um, rifle, and they shoot students that were harassing them or they thought didn't like them or and it doesn't end there their torment then turns on themselves and they shoot themselves and the devil's happy as powers of darkness love it hey? Because it was all wrong from the beginning. When it's all wrong from the beginning, it's going to end bad. It's not going to end good. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed went and hanged himself. Uh, no one had to do anything. The, the conscience and the mind, they play a big part in our stability. The conscience and the mind. Uh, yeah? depending on our heart decisions. Your conscience will depend on your heart decisions or your heart loves your conscience. Right? If your conscience is clean, it's obvious that uh, you're making the right heart decisions, right choices. Choose ye today. And then you can think straight, can't you? You're not confused. Thinking clearly and lucidity of mind. The devil don't want that. The powers of darkness don't want that. They want you to live in confusion, in a big jumble style. They don't want you to live in a big mess. They don't want you to have things in order. 
And once you tidy things up and it's all in order, then you can press on and you can do more things. For others. Able to give time to others. Or just wait around like a servant. That's what I do. I just wait around like a servant. You ever seen a butler in a palace or whatever, or a servant? They're waiting to be told what to do. And the Lord directs me. It's nothing spooky or kooky. Like, levitating in the middle of colds. (laughs) <laughs> Levitating this to the ice bovos. <laughs> Are you there, God? Mm-hmm. Talking to the dead. You know, might be with Alice Cooper. I love the dead. None of that. This is just simple, natural in the spirit as we are in the natural, waiting on the Lord for direction. And he does direct. Because his word says so. He'll direct your path. The word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. These are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit. Not not a human, the Spirit of God. Ah, yes, then I have have people over the years say to me, oh, yeah, I'm led by the Spirit. I don't need a pastor. I don't need a teacher. I don't need to go to church. I I don't need, I don't need, I don't need. Because these are people who just want to do their own thing. And they're using the Word of God for vice. Simple as that. It's not good when we use the Word of God to uh, justify ourselves in our wrong. Not good. Dangerous. Extremely dangerous. Dangerous. Odd and extremely dangerous. Da, 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 da. Hey? Danger zone there. You don't want to be tormented. Don't surrender to temptation. When Pazzi try to tempt us to get off the narrow road or to do things our way and think that, oh, I'm going to do some, I'm going to create some new special way. Give it a break. People like that come and go. You know, they've got some newfangled way and you you just don't know because you're not in the the spiritual. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Look, if it doesn't line up with the established word, of God with the Lord's doctrine just bin it and feel sorry for the ones trying to lead you beyond and pray for them by no means follow them wherever they're going even to the shop to get some mints (laughs) whatever has to line up with the word has to line up uh, we've got to be clear about that. Right? It's got to line up. There has to be discipline. There has to be correction. It has to be the father, then the son, then the husband, then the wife, then the children. In order. 
Otherwise, it's not going to work. Why it happen? Nothing can be added, killed. Right? Nothing can be lopsided. So, he went out and killed himself. He just couldn't cope. Temptation once accepted eventually lead to torment. And you know, some it will be hell eternally. All because they succumb, they, they surrendered to that temptation. Right? And it wasn't just that they surrendered to that one temptation and then fulfilled that desire and then sinned, but it's where that one led. Temptation leads to temptation, leads to temptation, and sin leads to sin, leads to sin, leads to death, 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 and uh, a place where the Lord will say, I don't know you. Right? We see, um, well, I don't watch movies, but we see movies advertised, you know, and there are movies where um, the husband and the wife fall out and, and it gets to a place where the husband doesn't know the wife anymore or the wife doesn't know the husband anymore at all and it's just totally strange. And, you know, the story goes, what's happened to you? You're not the same man, you're not the man I married. You're not the woman I married. What happened to you? You are so different. It's like I don't know you. Eventually they end up departing, but... Well, that's like the Lord. It gets where the Lord doesn't know us. He don't want to know us. Because of our uh, walk has been so abused. Because people have abused the grace of God. People have taken the Lord Jesus for granted. Eh? And they trod the blood on the foot. And there's no sacrifice left. And hell is the end. Eternal hellfire, perdition, spiritual ruin. We are not of those. Huh? We are heading to perdition. But we are of those who believe in the saving of the soul. Huh? We are not of those who draw back to perdition. I like the key word there, back. Back, see? Backwards. To perdition. Perdition is spiritual ruin. That's just totally ruined. The relationship's finished. Hellfire is all that's left. But of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. Glory, hallelujah. For you have, that's Hebrews 10, 33. 34 says, For you had compassion on me, Paul speaking, in my chain, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your finances, of your goods, of your, your possessions, knowing that you have a better and an enduring 
position for yourselves in heaven. I mean, these must have been, you know, beyond 2,000 givers. Because there was the plundering of their possessions, the plundering of their goods. Man, that's just like emptying the bank account sort of thing. <laughs> this is what it says here. You fully accept it, joyfully, joyfully, fully, joyed out to give up and beyond. Well, you don't see that today. You do, but you don't. It's rare. Oh, it's rare. Knowing that you have a better so see people that uh, plan to give they are the people that move in the spirit, understand the word beautifully, and they know they have a enduring position. They know they have this stuff that's in heaven on another planet. Think of that, another planet. So they don't mind plunder giving. Huh? I mean, that's pluming dust, pluming dust stuff. And you just drop the bag, boom. Glory, hallelujah. We need more plunder giving, don't we? Huh? We need more of that. But the devil's always you know, in the darkness, they're always tempting us. Uh, he, he don't want us to be plunder givers. He gets into the head of the people. Ah, why should you give that to them? Why give that to that prince? Look at him. Good for nothing thing. Yeah, let him go out and work on the chain gang. Eh? It's the devil, powers of darkness. He, he don't want to help anyone. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a tormentor, powers of darkness, troubler. Eh? Powers of the air, principalities and powers of the air. The devil comes up with the steel, kill and destroy. He don't want you getting blessed. He don't want you believing. Huh? Glory, hallelujah. When the old... Uh, you see the people, we just read it in Hebrews 10. Uh, from 32 forward when they were illuminated, they got the message, they got the light, and then the trouble started. That's the old darkness coming in. Powers of the air coming in. Oh, we have to tempt this one. We have to draw this one back. And the trouble and the tribulation and the suffering. And the devil gets into the head of the people. So, see, you shouldn't hang around with that blunt. He speaks the truth all the time because you're going to just end up with trouble. You're going to end up with suffering. You're going to be ostracised. You're going to be set out there on your own. Huh? No one want to know you. You need, you need to stop hanging around with that blood. You need to be on your own so I can torment you in your mind and that you'll never go forward and never grow up in the lawn. And what about the, those people in the book of Acts? Ah, oh, the torment. Huh? Let's go over to Acts for a minute, please, dear listeners. It's a lovely day today. It's a lovely day today. And if I may say 
I'm gonna go out there and tell the world of him. Jesus. X5. We're gonna start in verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife. Sold a possession. And he kept back part of the proceeds. His wife also being aware of it. And brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie? To the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. And keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. While it remained. Was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. Right. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened, and Peter answered her, Tell me whether you saw the land for so much. She said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, <coughs> How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. <laughs> then immediately, she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead. And carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church. And upon all who heard these things. Fear of the Lord. You don't mess around. This is Ananias. In verse 1 it says, But a certain man named Ananias with his... I should say, with Sapphira, his wife, who was a pastor. No. She wasn't a pastor, but many say she was. But I can't find it anywhere in the book of Acts where it says that Sapphira was a pastor. But anyway, getting back to the subject at hand. You see, they lied. Hey? And why did they lie? Well, verse 3 will tell you. Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie? Because he's the father of lies, isn't he? When I see people lying <coughs> or trying to escape from admitting the truth, I know that the devil's filling them. The devil's in the mix. But when I see people caught and they admit it and say yes, I did do that, and I did it because of this. I love that. I love that. That's admirable. I admire that. I admire people facing up 
not angrily, but just facing up humbly and say, yes, I did do that. And, and when you say, why did you do that? And they say exactly why. They don't lie. They don't lie to start with and they don't lie to finish with. Yes, I did do that and I did it because of this. See? That's what I love. But when you hear this ha ha but oh yeah, oh what do you mean? You know, ah, oh, mm, e. no, 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 no. That is not good. I don't love that. I despise that. Why has the devil filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? They didn't say anything to anyone, did they? It was only to God. Hey? They kept back part of the proceeds. They made a big uh, deal about it and then they backed down. We just slice a bit off for ourselves. Right? We just hold back here. Hold back on the offering. Right? But yet, pretending that they're doing otherwise. But they're holding back. It's pretty severe, isn't it? And a nice hearing these words fell down and read no more. <laughs> Just like that. Bang. That's how serious lying is. <coughs> That's how serious lying is. That's why it's numbered in Revelation 21 eight will not see the kingdom, will not even go near it. <coughs> hey. But the world teaches. Everyone lies. Everyone lies, everyone willfully sins, everyone's saved. God loves everyone. Everyone will be saved in the end. Uh, everyone's one, we all are one, we are the world. We are one. We are many, but we are one. <laughs> hey? Now there's no truth in any of that. Hmm? But the wicked government don't want to hear it. The truth. You ask elbow. I rejoice when I look back, you know, on the people that I've given I've given my personally written literature regarding Jesus Christ Father's Son and, and the Holy Spirit regarding the three who are one but three and I've written it personally by hand and given it uh, to the heads whether it's been the head of police in, in Roma Street or um, police with brass. I ministered at Roma Street Station for four years. And I gave literature to the, from the cleaners up to the top brass. And I look back and I think, Lord, that's so wonderful to me. It's a big deal because I'm just a little country boy. 
I just come from a dusty little town in central Queensland. Just another drunk. That's all I was. Nobody drunk. <laughs> and I'm, I give my literature to the Prime Minister of Australia, Elbow. Down in, in, at my um, tea shop. Hey, the Lord brought him down there to me, hypothetically speaking. You know, like, hey, come to me, ye who labour and are heavily laden, I'll give you rest. I had the opportunity to give my testimonial booklet and my uh, tracks to Albanese, Mr. Albanese the biggest compromising minister that's ever run Australia. He'll go along with anything, that bloke. But I'm so happy that I just slipped in a bit of truth for Elba. I don't have his blood on my hands. The leader of the country, I don't have his blood on my hands. I put it in his hand. <laughs> Uh, and Steve Irwin, I put, took my literature up to him in, in a little package, Hallelujah Parcel, and he died not long after. Eh? But he got the message. Well, I, I put it on his counter and the, the secretary said she's going to give it to him. If she lied, well, death sat at her door. His blood's on her head if she lied and didn't give it to him. And his blood's on his own hands if he never read it. Hey? And not to forget Shaquille O'Neal down in Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Turning night time into daytime. <laughs> and of course my old buddy pal mate, John Laws, the man with the golden microphone, golden tonsils or whatever they say. And I don't think his golden microphone's going to help him in hell. He might be able to do a bit of announcing down there. If he doesn't repent, that's where he'll end up. Yeah, a few major figures, but that's a nice little list. Prime Minister of Australia, Shaquille O'Neal, John Laws, and um, Steve Irwin. Hey, eh? what do you think of that? I had the opportunity to give that truth to them. The truth is the most beautiful thing you can give anyone. Because okay. I don't want them tormented in hell, ultimately. Because that's where the tormentor wants you, ultimately, in hell. You get people suicide, and that's what the devil, see? He overtakes them. He finds a way into their mind. End up, and no one has the right to take their own life. They're playing God, because only God gives life or takes life. Sad ending, isn't it? It's a sad ending. And Peter weeping bitterly and Judas hanging himself, Ananias and Sapphira lying, the, the devil, see. Satan filled their heart to lie. He's the one that gets people to lie, Satan. He put it in their heart. <laughs> to try and wriggle out, did you do this? A e u a ba a back sheep. Have you any? Well, just say yes. 
if you do, and then tell me why. <laughs> and I appreciate that, and then I'll admire you for it. But if you go, ah, hum, ha, be, ba, ooh, wee, I'll despise you for it. Let's give all the glory to Jesus, hey? Eh? Let's praise him. Let's praise him by obeying him. The greatest praise there is in worship. Do what he says. And all will be sweet. Eh? You won't be tormented of mind. You won't be troubled. Hey? Let's enjoy the day with Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. <laughs>